I can say definitively that neither of you are prepared for my case. <laughs> oh, uh, good. I just opened your photos. I did watch this documentary. Oh, so you know. I'm very excited for okay. you. I've watched this. the documentary oh, too. Shoot. It's fucking crazy. It's Damn. okay, but it's unbelievable, and I can't wait to hear your take mm-hmm. on it. So I actually didn't watch the documentary because I wanted to just like read the articles and tell the story how I see it. And now after this episode, I'm going to watch it. So it's good. It's (laughs) a bonkers case. So if you haven't seen it. She's bat Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, if you don't know already, uh, I will be talking about bad vegan. Mm -hmm. AKA Sarma Melmgalis. Okay. Malignant. Uh, which is a really tough last name, so I will be mainly just calling her Sarma. Okay. Sarma M. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Sarma Melngalis was born September 10th, 1972 in Newton, Massachusetts. A Virgo. Oh. Mm. Her father is originally from Latvia, hence the, the name, and mm. worked as a physicist at MIT. Her mother was a professional chef who co-founded a 450-acre apple orchard in New Hampshire. And a Damn. little bit more on her mom later. Wow. That's a lot of apples. Yeah, a not lot a regular apple. mom. That's a cool she's mom. She's an apple right mom. Yeah, she's an apple mom. <laughs> apple mom jeans, boots with the fur. <laughs> so like her parents, Sarma is a smarty pants. She graduates from the University of Pennsylvania Wharton School of Economics in 1994. Um, she then moves to NYC after graduation and works at the investment firm Bear Stearns for a couple years and a few other investments firms like Bain Capital in Boston and then like another one in New York and... She's like financing it up. Okay. I have a question yep. about Bear Stearns. Yeah. I'm assuming it's a name. Yeah. Why would you want an investment firm with the name Bear in it? Because of like a bear, Isn't it the like bear market. Isn't it like B E A R? No, it's B E A R. It's spelled yeah. the same way. I think it's just somebody's name. It's just kind it's- of a stupid choice for a. Like the stock market, the bear and the bull, you know? Yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't really think about that. So I'm thinking of a bear as like an aggressive, powerful animal. Yeah, it also means your stocks are going down. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's I just never somebody's thought about that. name. Joseph Ainsley Bear and Robert B. Stearns. Yeah, didn't think about that, did they? Yep. Mm. Yeah. It might have the queen of the stock market. Might have been over before here. we talked about bear and bull markets because it was oh. founded in 1923 maybe so maybe yeah. we didn't use those that terminology yet i don't know Got it. okay okay god i love fucking wikipedia okay <laughs> <laughs> but in the late 1990s uh sarma decides that she is unhappy working in finance and decides to completely change her career she enrolls mm-hmm. in new york's french culinary institute which now has a different name i think it's like the international culinary institute or something um and graduates in 1999 so she is like i'm done with businessy stuff and i want to be a chef okay during her time in culinary school sarma meets fellow chef slash big deal restaurateur matthew kenny who'd also attended that institute almost a decade prior but now he like has a career and, you know, has already started a restaurant and the two begin dating. So Kenny specializes in plant-based cuisine, like mostly Mm -hmm. vegan, but like, I don't know. It seemed like it was just more to be creative rather than like catering to to the vegan vegan. community, you know, like it was just, right? That's that's how I interpreted it. For the restaurant that they found together. Yeah, for like his specialty, like their first restaurant, it wasn't specifically for vegans. It was like, hey, look at all this really cool stuff you can do with plants. Mm. Yeah, not necessarily. It's a yes. We will get to the restaurant that they opened together, but yeah, it's it's plant based, so it's not like strict vegan, mm-hmm. and it's also raw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was already in the plant-based thing before he met Sarma, and he had already opened a namesake restaurant called Matthew's in New York. He is still a restaurateur. He's, he currently operates more than 50 different restaurants around the world. Damn. Jeez. 
Some of my busy bee. Busy bee. Some of my favorites are Essence Cuisine Shore Ditch (laughs) in London. Shore Ditch. Shore Ditch is a neighborhood in London. (laughs) You're sure to find a ditch on your way home from this restaurant. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Make in Santa Monica. (laughs) Make. Chef, make. M A K E make make <laughs> and the white lotus remains make <gasps> in Miami. What I know oh, pre-existed. We need to go. <laughs> okay, so the lovers mm-hmm. begin to collaborate, and in 2001 they open a restaurant called Commissary. But because of like 9/11 and the, the economy and whatever, the restaurant closes in 2003 because 2001 is a really tough time to open. A restaurant in Manhattan. Yeah. So then they try again and they have much more success the second time around. In June 2004, Sarma and Matthew opened Pure Food and Wine, New York's first upscale raw food restaurant. Okay. So the restaurant does really well. It is listed twice in New York Magazine's top 100 restaurants and ranks five years in a row on Forbes Magazine's list of all-star New York eateries. It's on all the lists. Okay. Everybody loves it. It's like a celeb spot. Mm -hmm. So celebrities like Alec Baldwin, a lot more on him later. Oh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) You would be surprised how prominent a role he plays in all of this. I don't want more Alec Baldwin. Nobody (laughs) wants more Alec Baldwin. (laughs) And Hathaway, Giselle Boonshin, and Tom Brady, Alicia Silverstone, Rooney Mara, Gwyneth Paltrow, all the like clean eating. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course, Gwen uh, was there. Of course, Gwen was of there. Course. <laughs> I'm of course, like, Gwyneth ob- was there. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the TikTok trend right now, where people are like guessing the things that if Gwyneth Paltrow ate them, like how Send much they would harm her. <laughs> yeah, there's like coma. a scale. It's like coma. It's like upset stomach, coma, instant death. <laughs> have it's I, like, have I told the anecdote about Gwyneth and um, Zach's mom? No. no. So, okay, allegedly, allegedly, don't get sued. Okay. Um, (laughs) Bravo, bravo, bravo. (laughs) Bravo, bravo, bravo. Zach's mom was a location scout for TV and movies for a long time, and she set up a a location that was her friend's home because her friend had a really beautiful, like, brownstone, I think. And so they were going to be shooting something there, not like a movie, maybe like a commercial. It was pre-goop. Okay. And Gwyneth is involved. And uh, on the counter in her friend's kitchen, when they're like still setting up for the shoot, is a packet of ramen noodles. Oh, my God. Uh Uh-oh. Get it away from Gwyneth. (laughs) And Gwyneth grabbed it. And she, mind you, she's in this woman's home like you she's a stranger in a different woman's home yeah (laughs) she grabs the ramen noodles off the counter and goes do you feed this to your children and the woman goes oh my courtney kardashian yeah seriously and what did gwyneth gwyneth said something like i would rather like something like I would rather like kill them or like it's pure poison or something like that. And then threw it on the ground. Ma'am, relax. It's a cultural dish, first of all. Well, oh the packet ramen. God. Is, yeah. Co- college cultural dish. Yeah. I don't know. Or I'd, like I'd rather feed my children poison or something like that. Jesus Christ. Get a life. Yeah. <laughs> Grow up. She is a psycho. She is. <laughs> But also, like, if I were so f- concerned about my self-image and if my eating were as disordered as hers is, I'd probably have a few synapses misfiring. She, like, yeah. survives on coffee, like a seaweed lozenge and an IV every day. I'm yeah, surprised it's like, she drinks she's coffee. She's not healthy. I'm surprised she drinks coffee. That's terrible she for you. She wants to still be hashtag relatable, so she also, like, makes a big deal about having, like, a martini every once in a while and, oh, like, okay. once every six years every on the full moon. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> a cigarette? Oh, my God. This woman is insane. Yeah, she's insane. Okay. Insane. In the membrane. In the membrane. I was so. just about to say. <laughs> all right, so all these celebs are at Pure Food and Wine, okay? It's doing really yeah. well. 
Uh, in fact, uh, Sarma, Matthew, and their business partner, a guy named Jeffrey Chodoro, who also has a sketchy past, but we don't have time to get into it because there's so much to get into, mm-hmm. decide to open a side retail space called One Lucky Duck Juice and Takeaway. This is the mid 2000s. Juicing mm-hmm. is like the thing. Mm-hmm. It's a big People thing, are yeah. spending like $18 on a juice, a green juice. Yeah. God. Tastes like asshole. Yeah, no thanks. Put in a blender. <laughs> yeah. Stuffed with spinach. It's so mm-hmm. good for you. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, I love this ginger shot. <laughs> <laughs> I do love ginger shots, though. I, I really do. There's a time and a place. Yeah. So, Matthew and Sarma write a cookbook together. It's called Raw Food Real World. They're just, you know, the business is going gangbusters. But soon thereafter, their relationship, both romantic and business, sours. And Sarma would later blame the breakup on Kenny's, quote, irresponsibility with money. Which, like, just remember that line for later. Yeah. LOL, Sarma. <laughs> I guess, you know, game recognizes game. <laughs> there was probably, like, a grain of truth to these claims. So their, sure. their co-investor, Chodoro, uh, expressed worries about Matthew Kenny's reputation for not paying his bills totally on time. Whereas Sarma had this, like, business school degree and this finance background and so the implication was that she should be trusted with all the restaurant money stuff Mm -hmm. didn't go great so (laughs) when it's clear that they aren't going to be able to run the restaurant together anymore Chodoro lends Sarma two million dollars so she can buy Kenny out so they you imagine just being able to be like yeah you could borrow two mil Mm -hmm. no worries Mm-hmm. Some people <laughs> have too much money. Mm-hmm. Seriously. So the the restaurant that was co-owned by like these three or co, you know, big investors. Now they've bought Matthew Kenny out and he out. And now it's mm-hmm. Chodoro and Sarma, but Sarma's running it. And Chodoro's just like the money. Which one mm-hmm. is she in a relationship with or she's not? Any- she broke up with Matthew Kenny and now he's out of the story. The- okay, okay. And we're not on to the other one the new love interest mm-hmm. yet so post breakup sarma is hashtag girl bossing it up she's running pure food and wine on her own she's running one lucky duck she's working on expansion she's writing more cookbooks she's getting she's her taking juice- yoga yeah she's, yeah she's getting her juices into major retailers like whole foods which is like where the big money is yeah she's doing really well mm-hmm Now stick with me through this next part because it's super bizarre and it sounds like word salad filler, (laughs) but I promise it's important to the story. Mm -hmm. In 2010, Sarma meets restaurant regular Alec fucking Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Yes, that Alec Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And they start to hang out. First red flag. (laughs) She then accompanies him to a staged reading of Moby Dick in the Hamptons. Which sounds the like the whole thing, the whole time. The whole time. And it can't be that the whole thing. Oh god, awful. That is the <laughs> It'd worst. It'll still be there. Uh, Call me. It. I'm out. I <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. Nope. Yep. 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 So he's dropping hints about how he wants to get married and have more children, and like, don't worry, buddy. Like, you do. You will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Sarma's not feeling it, and she jokes that he should get a dog instead. <laughs> I'm sure he loved that. But this gets her thinking that maybe she should get a dog. So she ends up adopting a pit bull and names him Leon or like Leon, whatever. Like, yeah. He's Leon is going to be integral to the story. Yep. This fucking pit bull who has no clue what is happening in no, any of this. No, it's just this sweet <laughs> little blockhead baby. Yeah. Do you have a picture of him on the drive? Yeah, I do. Yes, Yay. he's so cute. <laughs> so she... Oh my God, one ear is up and one ear is down. I know. He's a oh, sweet he's little angel. baby boy, but he's just a... Yeah. So she dates somebody else. It doesn't work out. Alec fucking Baldwin is hitting on her. She's not into it. She's got this bad dating history and she becomes this like slightly obsessed dog mom for a little while. Mm-hmm. So like her whole her life baby. is yeah. work and this dog. She just mm-hmm. externalizes her identity at any opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. She's, she gets swept up real fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, in 2011, Alec Baldwin meets Hilaria. 
Mm-hmm. Thomas. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Boston of Boston. <laughs> pure food and wine. Mm-hmm. And then so they meet at the restaurant, which is amazing. And then the next year they marry and now they have like seven kids in 10 years. Uh, ow. Yeah. So Baldwin ow. and... Sh- <laughs> She didn't have them all. Uh, Irish, well, yeah, Irish quintuplets. Still, yeah. Ouch in a million ways. <laughs> yeah. So Baldwin and Sarma are, ju- are just friends, and he is like an early Twitter adopter, if you recall. Mm-hmm. He was like the king of Twitter for a mm-hmm. while. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he helps her set up her Twitter account and like shows her how Twitter works. And one of her first followers is a guy with the handle uh, at Disciple of Todd. Mm-hmm. who okay. is basically just like a reply boy to Alec Baldwin online. He like mm-hmm. is always like in Alec Baldwin's ass threads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, try to be famous. Ass. Yeah. Ass. Up Alec Baldwin's ass. Ass. <laughs> but she thinks he's clever and funny and she follows him back and they start flirting over Twitter and words with friends, which is another Alec Baldwin. <gasps> wow. I loved words with friends. This is the most mid 2000s yes, shit really I've ever is. fucking you heard. Juicing oh. words with friends. With friends Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Investor for Twitter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these were the golden days of our youth. Seriously. <laughs> Um, early on, she is impressed that this guy, Disciple of Todd, is... Disciple uh, of Todd. That he, like, gets the reference of her dog's name, because she named the pit bull Leon, or Leon, or whatever, after Leon the Professional, the movie. Oh, which is, like... an incredible film. Great film. Not that niche. Not, no. like, that surprising. Pretty famous. Yeah, that he gets it. It was, on TB- so deep. it was on TBS like a lot. Yeah. Constantly. <laughs> right between Shawshank mm-hmm. and like uh, the Green Mile. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Standard you nailed programming. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Disciple of Todd goes by the name Shane Fox online mm. but we find out later another baby shane baby <laughs> shane <laughs> but we find out later that his real name is strangest than fiction no really it's anthony strangest oh i thought his name was strangest, strangest than, than fiction. fiction i just took you at your quip <laughs> wow yeah That's anthony strangest strangest, strangest. Okay. and he Don't is like a that. strangest strangest dude Don't so talk to strangest don't talk to strangers <laughs> don't talk to strangers <laughs> so a little Amanda. background on- <laughs> <laughs> so stupid it's so dumb the way that Lucy was so excited about this pun and it just burst out of you oh, don't talk to don't strangers, talk to strangers. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying yeah. to emanate the overbearing mother. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Don't talk to strangers. It, it was amazing. <laughs> so okay, uh, this dude. Little background on him because he is fucking bonkers and horrible. No, he's strangers. <laughs> yeah, it gets strangers and strangers. He uh, grew up in a suburb of Boston, much mm. like Ilaria. <laughs> Ilaria. <laughs> Um, he had a love of gambling at a young age. Wow. Okay. <laughs> his dad was a cop and an abuser. Uh, mm, and when Anthony's weird. mother tried to leave uh, her husband, he allegedly held the family hostage at gunpoint for four hours. Oh, my God. So okay. Anthony learned a lot from his dad. Blue lives yeah. super matter, you guys. Still, his mother managed to get a divorce, although custody was shared. And in 2004, Anthony, who was then 23 at the time, was still living with his father in Sarasota, Florida, when he met a woman named Stacy Avery at the gym. Okay. Oh, my God. The number of red flags in that sentence. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sarasota, gym, living with your father, meeting someone at the gym, Mm -hmm. being 23. Mm -hmm. Um, Being 23 is such a red flag. It really is. Such a red flag. (laughs) Just hunker down. Just hunker down. Don't communicate with anyone. Don't. In that time. Don't trust anyone. Don't make any big decisions. Leave society. 
Pretty much. <laughs> okay. So Stacy was a young mother who had just recently separated from her husband, and Anthony, recognizing that Stacy was vulnerable, love bombed her so hard that she agreed to marry him in just a few months after they met. Yuck. No, yuck. Ew, no. Part of the love bombing manipulation was telling her that they were reincarnated lovers who had traveled through space and time to find each other again. Okay. Which would be kind of his MO. He's very into the fifth dimension worldly mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. In another clear abuser move, Anthony pushed Stacy to have a baby right away. Great. Trap it. And then pawned all of her jewelry Trap when it. she became pregnant. Oh. oh, great. Supposedly in like a, well, we got to pay for the baby, blah, blah, blah. But all the while, he was claiming that he was- Get a job, guy. Mm, no. <laughs> not, guy? Not guy? for Anthony. <laughs> Jobs are not for Anthony. <laughs> not strangers. Not Anthony. <laughs> Don't be a strangers. Uh, da, 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 da. The whole time he was claiming that he was set to inherit $5 million from his aunt, but he just needed money from Stacy until that big inheritance came his way, and then they'd be set for life. If you send me a money order for mm-hmm. $20,000, mm-hmm. I'm just going to take five, and you can keep the other 15. <laughs> no, then you'll get 20 more on top. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. That too. So the money did not come, obviously, and they were flat broke, but Anthony refused to get a job. And she has a young kid and is now pregnant. Mm-hmm. So but he also, only the baby is his? Yeah, she, she has, has a, a kid from her first from marriage. From a previous okay. marriage, yeah. yeah. So he also started saying dark things like how you could kill a baby by giving them salt and it, quote, wouldn't show on an autopsy. Which is, is like, that oh my true? God. No, there's no, I mean, I, I bet you could kill a baby that way. It's not hard to kill a baby. Oh my God. No. But I bet it would show on an autopsy. This guy's also a fucking moron. Ugh. I'm going to quote you saying it's not hard to kill a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're, I mean, it's not. It's, it's not, not hard to keep them alive. They're helpless <laughs> little ba- baby beings. Oh. Little blobs. Just little sensitive little bean bags for like yeah. six plus months. Years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so after he said that to her, she never left her children alone with him, but she still wasn't quite ready to leave the relationship because it's an abusive oh. relationship. And she's being yeah. manipulated. Yeah. So Anthony moves into Stacy's house and he starts to act more and more bizarre, often telling her that people were out to get him, you know, all this stuff. But he's not actually paranoid. Like, he doesn't believe the bullshit. It's all bullshit. Right. It's all manipulation. Yeah. To get her to, f- like, feel for him and yeah. be af- afraid for him and... Yeah. Want to yeah. protect yeah. him and da-da-da. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So Stacy eventually falls behind on her mortgage in 2005, and she finds that all of her electronics have been pawned. So she has, like, nothing that she can – she has no, like, assets that she can try to get money from anymore because he's right. taken them all. Yeah. So once he had milked her for everything she had, Anthony ups and leaves. He abandons Stacy with their eight-month-old son and disappears off to find new prey. Cool. Oh. Bye. Good choice of words. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, so we're back to Sarma now. That's just background mm-hmm. on Anthony. Sarma is a successful, accomplished, well-educated, beautiful woman. And when she first met Anthony in person in November 2011, she thought he looked, quote, a little rougher than his online persona. <laughs> persona wasn't Quite like the pics. Don't look exactly like the pics, but (laughs) but guess this is fine. But Hmm. she quote didn't no. (laughs) She quote didn't want to be superficial, so she gave him a chance. No, just be superficial. Mm. Just be superficial. Trust your judgmental (laughs) gut. Mm -hmm. According to Strangest's mother, he was living in a van outside of Boston at this time. Down by the river. Jesus. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Mm -hmm. But what he lacks for in looks or personality or (laughs) wit or charm or... 
I could go on. (laughs) He makes up for in confidence. Oh, Oh. God. Don't they always? So he's basically Rasputin. Like, he's disgusting, Mm -hmm. but he just, like, worms his way into her life and then is, like, latched. Latched and, like, like he's just a really good con man. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's been called Svengali-like manipulator. Okay. He is Rasputin, basically. Yeah, Yeah. he is Rasputin. (laughs) So Strange quickly picks up on the fact that Sarma is worried about her finances and how she's going to pay back her, like, multi-million dollar loans from her investors, and that's weighing on her a lot. And so Anthony claims that he will help her pay back all the money and more. Sure he will. But, like, obviously the exact opposite happens. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So once he feels that she's really on the hook, Strangest begins weaving some really fucking wild stories. And Sarma somehow becomes brainwashed and starts mm-hmm. to eat it all up. She's impressionable. She's really she, impressionable. She's I also, so impressionable. I find it really interesting that, like, she falls for a con man. Alec Baldwin falls for a con woman. Mm-hmm. Um, Anne Hathaway, if you recall dated a con man who mm. for several years before he went to prison like it all came out gwyneth yeah. is basically a con woman gwyneth is basically a con woman they all it's a just con like ring congregate at this fucking raw food restaurant cool vegan cons yeah i just thought that was Ugh. interesting anyway mm, it is well i sure hope you liked that clip If you did like that clip, make sure you are subscribing to our YouTube channel, leaving us a nice review, and joining us on Patreon for even more video content, audio content, salacious content all around. Come join us. Treat yourself.